forget stuff, you know? If it's not one thing, it's another. Hey, I, got, I don't have a knife on me. Embarrassing myself. Well, I haven't got a knife, but oh. I, need, I need my little Sean to get in there and do the thing. That's not a knife. <sighs> All right. That's a knife. Hey team, Chef Eric Kephart here. Hope you're doing well today. I wanna to talk about ribs, pork ribs in particular. So I've got three different types from Cheshire pork right now. Uh, let's take a look at the baby back. Uh, really big curvature here. They taper down a little bit. You'll notice in their rising popularity, uh, more of that loin region is kept on there. So nice and meaty, but really lean in comparison to the, check this out, the spare rib. Look at this big side piece, also known as side ribs. Uh, they're a little bit lower anatomically on the pork. So they're, instead of being up here where the baby backs are, they're graduating down towards the belly, but not quite the belly. Now, if we take these side ribs or spare ribs and trim off the cartilage and some of this meat here, we're left with St. Louis style ribs, which are just trimmed spare ribs. So I just wanted to kind of break that down for you. Uh, over the next couple months, we're gonna be releasing videos on all three of these. But today, let's jump in on baby back ribs. And without further ado, three, two, one, baby back ribs, minus the three, minus the one. Two hour baby back ribs, let's get them. The baby backs are leaner than your St. Louis, so they were not gonna have to have extra time for uh, that collagen, gelatin, and all that intermuscular fat to break down. That's why they're gonna be able to cook in two hours. I'm just gonna get some of this uh, membrane off of the rack side. Now it's not because there's any meat here, but we want the smoke and seasoning to penetrate. So I'm just gonna make a little pocket right here with my finger and gently get underneath. And at this point, you're, you don't want it to rip. So you're just going a little bit at a time. And now the trick here is to just go a little bit on each side and get this thing off in one swoop. Notice how that comes off nice and easy. Flip it around and nice and easy. Um, there are a couple of uh, housekeeping notes I wanna do. Some of this stuff on the end here, if there's shards of bone right at the end, I'll go ahead and trim those off just because they're gonna burn up on us but I will cook that with it and that'll be a little snack. Flip it on over and look at this piece of meat here, a uh, piece of loin. Also snack them, beautiful. Nice squared off in there. Let's evaluate the other side. There is this little rib here on the end. I'm gonna cut that as well. Now this is not competition by any means. This is just fun backyard cooking, uh, but we have taken the membrane off to make it easier to eat and easier to separate and get more smoke and more seasoning. Uh, let's go ahead and get that seasoning on the ribs. So I'm gonna use a two seasoning system today, starting with Lane's Barbecue Brisket. And this has got, uh, well, it's pretty heavy on the salt and pepper. So I want the salt to start doing its work and pulling out moisture so that all these big granules can stick. And that is enough on that side. The second layer is gonna be Lane's Barbecue Sweet Heat. So that's gonna help us build that bark in a short period of time. Uh, the chili powder is really gonna, uh, uh, gonna, gonna help us get a really nice look on these ribs. Beautiful. We're gonna let this sit for you know, three to five minutes until we start seeing it tack up and then we know we can flip it without losing all of that seasoning. It's been three minutes, nice and tacked up. Let's go ahead and flip and season this side. Same game, folks. Start with the salty seasoning, which is our Lane's barbecue brisket, and then follow up with your sweet heat. That heat is gonna obviously bring some nice heat and the sweet is gonna help build that bark. We're using the Kamada Joe Classic 3 today, and I wanna smoke indirect. So I've stabilized the grill at 300 degrees, and I'm gonna bury a couple of wood chunks right in there. And today we're using cherry wood. So I'm gonna go right in at the hottest portion of the flame, 
and it's gonna start smoking up here in a second, but it's not until the, it combusts that we're actually ready to put our deflector shields in, have that nice clean smoke and put our racks of ribs on. Deflector shields are in, grill grates are at the highest portion of the divide and conquer system. I'm gonna put my racks of ribs on bone side down. And we're gonna continue to cook that way uh, for the first hour. But don't forget about those little rib bits. I did forget, but look at this cutting board. We've still got some nice seasoning here. I'm just gonna roll them around. Look at that. Again, that's a piece of the, the loin. So I'm just gonna kinda slow cook that and as we're going this will be a nice little snack because i love snacks beauty all right lids going down we'll check back in one hour as we're approaching that 300 degrees we're going to start dampering down our airflow and that's going to help us stabilize at that 300 fahrenheit we're looking for so with a cut as known and as legendary as baby back we need a sauce that's going to stand up to it now here i lean into my father-in-law tom hudson uh, we're going to make hudson barbecue sauce absolutely delicious so start with a bowl uh, we need nine ounces of apricot preserve and you can find this in your grocery store uh, near the jelly i believe is where we found it which would make sense 10 ounces of chili sauce some Dijon mustard. I believe that's two uh, or one tablespoon there. A little bit of cumin. I'll be honest, the cumin is actually my addition. I'm a sucker for cumin. A little black pepper. Red wine vinegar. And last but not least, a secret weapon to this recipe Lipton onion soup and dip mix. This is a little dry packet. I, I love this little trick, you know? It smells like onions. There's just some, just some flaky stuff in there that's gonna bloom out. And for some reason, on ribs, this is, this is just a secret weapon. Uh, you've heard me talk about sauces, non-cooked sauces. And if you can get a dozen of these quick sauces uh, that don't need cooking, that are absolutely home runs, you got it made. I remember our Pura Vida sauce was one. This Hudson barbecue is fantastic on smoked baby back or St. Louis style ribs. But for our two hour ribs, we've got an amazing sauce. Super excited. We're sitting at an hour, still stabilized at that 300 Fahrenheit. And I love the bark that we've got here, okay? Bones aren't terribly exposed, but we've got good shape here. I like the bark. Let's go ahead and put a little sauce on and wrap. So what we're gonna do is take some of this butcher paper and put a little sauce down right there. Let's get those ribs and lay a meat side down right on top of our sauce there and kind of rock and roll it just a little bit. And then let's put a little line of sauce right down the center of the bones here, starting from the end. And with a brush, just kind of slather that on around. All right, so we go meat side down because we're gonna fold this up. And I still wanna have the bones down. So we're gonna place the rack just like that. And the weight of the rack is holding this whole package closed. Set it back on our 300 degree grill and pull off some of our snacks. Fun little bites we'll sauce up, those are for us. All right, lid down, one hour to go. Let's take a look. Uh, it's been an hour and 50 minutes and I'm gonna poke through and just see, you know, I always hit a bone. I straight up always hit, yeah, boom, right onto a bone. That's pretty butter. That's pretty butter. Let's try one more spot. Yep, that's pretty butter too. And let's look at that internal. Sitting at that 200 to 205 that we absolutely love. You know, with ribs, you can go a little less. But we're right where I want to be. Let's see how the sauce is set up. Flip, flip it. Yahtzee. That's what I'm talking about. 
such a tight tacked glaze all that flavors there we could we could baste it again we got plenty more sauce but i'm telling you guys i don't like too saucy of a rib that's it for me right there and look not really too much burning in the paper either little caramelization around the ends but when we take a look at the ends of our ribs spot on so usually what I do to tell if a rack of ribs is done or not is I'll pick it up from the center and we, we want to be very careful with this and see how it's starting to break right there that's called the breakover okay so just the weight of the rib is starting to break both ends are hanging touching the cutting board and it's starting to break over so for me this is a perfect rib we can let it rest tented or not tented doesn't matter at this point uh, I always struggle with cutting ribs from the top side like this because they always run slightly at an angle so I don't want to mess up this beautiful tacked uh, top so what I'm gonna do is kind of just hold the ribs like this and see what I'm talking about there at that angle I'm gonna cut them directly in half that way I'm only handling half of the rack and I've chosen a serrated knife and that just cuts up butter that's a pretty rib right there So that'd be a nice half rack to put on, uh, put on a table, put on a plate. Let's go ahead and cut a couple individual ribs. Mm -hmm. The aromas right now are through the roof. That apricot is just singing my song. Oh. pull right off if we want to but it's still gonna have a nice bite let's let's go it's just screaming hot it's screaming hot <laughs> it's screaming hot we should have let it rest I, I'm the worst at letting things rest I really am but that's a good looking rib mm, baby backs I'm a st. Louis guy but I'm going nuts over these baby backs I feel like I got it all over my face you know you're just not doing ribs right if you don't get it on you mmm that's a two hour rib right there. I want you to think about this too. We're using a Kamado style grill, right? It's a Kamado Joe, it's a ceramic grill. You can get this done in two hours in your ceramic grill. It holds more moisture in the dome. It's 360 radiant heat. Uh, so if you're using a pellet smoker, I'm not, I'm not saying that every grill can get baby back ribs done in two hours. But one of the benefits of a Kamado Joe is using limited amount of charcoal able to adhere smoke in a very quick manner and that 360 heat is going to drive in moisture and get things done quicker so two hour baby back rib on the kj no problem 300 degrees all right team that's a good rib flat out i don't have any romantic words to throw around that right there is a darn good rib and i would eat it five days out of five all right even as a st louis guy that baby back was impressive and in two hours come on man come on uh, folks, if you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoy cooking those ribs for you, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a beat, and uh, do throw us a like, leave a comment. I read all the comments. I love responding to you guys, and let us know what your favorite sauce is, or if you're a big fan of St. Louis or Baby Back. Either way, from our backyard to yours, cheers and happy grilling.